Right, hey, tell you, hey, champs, and let me introduce you to, well, the best temp generation gaming laptop I've used so far, and this is the one to beat, I reckon, at the moment, at least, anyway. This is the Gigabyte Aura's 15G gaming laptop. Differs from Nero, more affordable, latest price in the description. It is a monster. Let me tell you, it's a monster. And I review so many laptops, and they've got Intel 9th, 10th generation, RTX, whatever, and... They're all the same, same, but different. Yeah, there's slight different variants in performance and that, but generally, they're all the same. This is not the same. This one is special. Hear that? Mechanical keyboard, baby, yes. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh, look at that glorious sound, yes. Mechanical keyboard. Hear it? Oh yeah, that keyboard's awesome. Now, this thing comes with the latest temp generation Intel CPUs. This has the 10875H, so that's an eight core CPU. We also have RTX 2070 Super, super duper. So we're talking 90 watts here, and that's why this is such a great gaming device. I mean, it is really good. Now, the first benchmark I actually run on this was Red Dead Redemption, and usually RTX 2070, you're thinking about 60, 65 frames per second you know, at the high or equivalent of high. Basically, I just go into the settings, I go prefer quality and then just turn off all the ultras and put it to high. So equivalent of high settings, usually 65 frames per second. This thing here, woof, it was doing over 70 frames per second, like 75 frames per second of Red Dead high settings. Wow. So this thing really performs. And not only do you get that awesome mechanical keyboard, you also get great performance, 240 hertz display, buttery smooth, super connected feeling. It is amazing. It's nice and fast. It is a good display. So yeah, I really like that. Now benchmarks come and go. Windows versions, driver versions, you know. You can take them with a pinch of salt. Yes, a pinch of salt. It's not a grain of salt. Anyone that says that, shh. You can take them with a pinch of salt because everything changes over time, right? But thermals usually don't change bar sort of some sort of special upgrade to the BIOS or whatever. So the first thing I do is I test the thermal performance and this thing here is really good. So I tested Cinebench and Luxmark simultaneously. So you hit that GPU 100%, hit that CPU 100% and the CPU was maintaining around 60 watts and the GPU was doing 90 watts. So that's what you want. Maximum performance when the GPU and CPU is lit up 100%. And if I have a look at my notes here, yes, stocks in a bench was around 3,300. Uh, if you unlock the voltage, it's around 3,700 Cinebench. And with the GPU being lit up 100%, it was around 3,000. So it lost about 300 points once the GPU was lit up, but that's pretty good. Now gaming, the skin temperature, yeah, it's not really that bad. I wouldn't put it on your lap because the vents are underneath anyway. But on the top here, there's nothing to worry about in terms of heat. All gaming laptops are loud. And I did test everything in its gaming mode with full maximum performance. 1080p, high settings, everything. And it just killed all those benchmarks, you know, stuff that I'm not used to seeing on a normal 2070. And yeah, 240 hertz display. If you're playing Fortnite, if you're playing something like, you know, CSGO, Overwatch and that, you can get, you know, the frames up there to take advantage of these displays. But most of the time, you're getting around 120 frames per second mark, 1080p high. So you still get a super connected, nice buttery feeling of gaming. Now, when I was gaming, Battlefield is always the test for me to see if that CPU clock can stay up. But most of the time, the CPU clock was doing more than, say, 4 gigahertz. But sometimes it would drop down to around 3.5, 3.6 on Battlefield. So, yeah, that's normal for gaming laptops, I would say. Some perform better than others in this regard, and there was nothing really jarring about it. It was nice and smooth, the transition from over 4 gigahertz to 3.5. Nothing jarring about it, and it will hit 90 degrees on that CPU, and that's where it's backing off. It hits that 90 degrees, probably can boost up higher and stay at 4 gigahertz if it went to 100, but they've chosen to, you know, put it at 90 degrees. That's up to them, and yeah. Games like Battlefield, it will drop down to around 3.5, 3.6. Most of the other games that were sitting at 4 gigahertz or 4.1, the sort of maximum for this all-core. So anyway, 
This is a great gaming machine. Check out the Red Dead run at the end and check out the frame rates. Check out the benchmarks. It's an awesome gaming machine. This is the one to beat so far out of the 10th generation, the mechanical keyboard. Ooh, yes, it's different. It's, you know, it performs. This is what you want in a gaming laptop, and I really like it. Yeah, it's a good package. Stay tuned for my full review. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho. <laughs>